Alright, when I heard there was competitive sermon writing, I pulled this fight out of my arsenal. Steal that. The story I share with you today begins as someone else's has ended, actually after. Two months ago, I first stood beside a man I never met, lying on his back. I will never meet him, as I said, and I will never get to. Yet I've come to know him more intimately than anyone else. If you want to know what somebody looks like on the inside, go to medical school. <laughs> Learning anatomy with donated cadavers is a rite of passage for physicians in training. Don't worry, I won't be too graphic. Besides, I thought the young Kippur crowd I first wrote this for might actually thank me for a debar that induced loss of appetite. <laughs> to preserve life, doctors begin their study at death, life's soul inevitability. First, do no harm, they say, because it's impossible. On a cadaver, the worst you could possibly do is bring him back. <laughs> We're told nothing of their past, so our imaginations fill in the gaps. In this crowd, you probably are a medical student, were one, or your mother would like you to marry one. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Each body receives a new identity and even a backstory. I was working with Uncle Charlie. He might be dating Gladys a couple of tables down, but he kept pretty silent about it. <laughs> this might sound crazy, but we were doing what we hoped to do most, help a stranger to live again, even if we were making it up. We tend to forget how amazing the human body is. Every bone, muscle, artery, vein has a nerve, a nerve, has a name, a place of origin, a destination, a purpose, and preceding generations have amassed an astounding blueprint of how each part must work, at least until it ceases to. Just how amazing, you ask? What sermon be complete without an anatomy lesson? Hold your arm out in front of you and bend your wrist inward. See the bump that pumps out, that pops out? It's a tendon called palmaris longus and it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's vestigial, like the appendix. It used to attract our claws. Claws? Mm. But if you injure a tendon elsewhere, surgeons extract this one to repair it. The body is a suit, and it comes with extra buttons. <laughs> but for as many buttons as were made on Uncle Charlie, though, something was clearly missing. It wasn't the bones, all there I counted. It wasn't the organs present, the muscles. Everything was there, but no longer being utilized. If each of us were merely the sum of our parts, what distinguishes us from this man I never met? We are animate, vivacious, the most intricate machines on earth, but it takes something more. Never have I been personally more convinced by the existence of the soul, nefesh, ruach, whatever you choose to call it, than by poking around and trying to figure out where it fit. I admit I haven't found it yet, though I remain optimistic. Each of us should consider ourselves an empty tabernacle, a delicately constructed vessel, yet one waiting to be spurred by, by the flame of the Almighty. The body is but a statue alone, likewise the soul, however divine, cannot impact our world for good or evil, except but through the body. At semester's end, I asked Uncle Charlie for forgiveness for any way I had transgressed him, knowingly or otherwise. It felt disappointing to receive such a blank expression in return. <laughs> Yet it was the same face looking back at me the whole time. It was an eternal face, not unlike one looking down from above. Hashem volunteers himself to us, knowing we are going to mess up. God grants us free will and the reins to deconstruct him piece by piece if that's what it takes to know him better. God knows we are going to disrespect to cut the wrong strands, to mess up, even be tempted by false prophets amidst the pursuit of knowledge. Life, like anatomy, has twists and turns. Books like Torah guide us, but the veins are not always blue, nor arteries red. The path is not always clear. Sometimes we see the truth, sometimes we pretend to, until it feels real. And yet, even at the height of our ineptitude, even at our worst, chiseling at God's chest, cracking God's ribs, cutting out God's heart and holding it in our hands, God endures. God doesn't turn away. God doesn't criticize your sloppy scalping technique. God doesn't bat an eye. We must remember to care for our bodies and of those we love, and consciously live the privilege it is to inhabit them, however ephemerally, as the true houses of Hashem. We must embrace the faces staring back at us, especially the quiet ones. 
If we let ourselves realize that nothing we have done thus far has truly distanced ourselves from Hashem, then we can only work to draw ourselves closer.